This is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over Abruptio Placente. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over the maternity system. And as always at the end of this YouTube video, don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on this condition. So let's get started. First let's start out talking about what is this condition. It is where you have detachment of the placenta before the birth of the baby. So here we have a detachment issue. In placenta previa, which we're gonna be talking about in the next lecture, we have an attachment issue. So remember that to help you differentiate between the two. And this detachment can either be a partial detachment or a total where it completely completely is removed from the uterine wall. So here we have a baby inside of its mom's uterus and the mom has experienced abruptio placentae. So this placenta, which should normally be nice and flush up against that uterine wall, has came off of it. Now that's gonna be a problem because our placenta, what's its role? It's very important with maintaining our pregnancy also with helping deliver oxygen and nutrients to the baby and removing waste from the baby via the umbilical cord, which is coming off of the placenta. Now, when should the placenta normally be delivered? When should it actually detach from the uterine wall? Well, it should come off after birth when we don't need it anymore because its whole goal is to maintain that life for that child and once the baby is delivered, it can come out. But if it comes out prematurely, we have issues. And the times of it to be delivered can vary anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. So when this placenta comes off this uterine wall, there's some things that can happen. Number one, with this condition, you wanna monitor the patient for concealed bleeding because it can stay inside of the uterus, not come out vaginally like it can with placenta previa. So it's really important you monitor that fundal height. Is the uterus increasing when it really shouldn't? Or their abdominal girth. And another thing is that the placenta, when it detaches, it becomes damaged. And it can release large amounts of thromboplastin into mom's circulation, which can set off an event called DIC, which is disseminated intravascular coagulation. So you have all this thromboplastin going into mom's circulation. This is going to cause a major clotting event in her body, where she's gonna get little microembolisms throughout. And this can affect perfusion to really important organs. And then that's gonna deplete her clotting factors, which is a big problem because from where this placenta came off that uterine wall, it's a nice, fresh, open wound. So if we don't have clotting factors, she has a wound right there from where the placenta has detached. What's she at risk for? Hemorrhage bleeding out. So you have to watch out for that. Now what can cause this condition where that placenta will partially or totally come off that uterine wall? Well, if the woman has experienced chronic hypertension throughout the pregnancy, because typically abruptio placentae occurs in that third trimester later on. So if she's been experiencing uncontrolled hypertension, that can cause it, along with developing preeclampsia increases the risk, or had a history of a previous abruptio placente, has experienced some type of trauma to the abdomen, uses cocaine or smokes, also experienced premature rupture of the membranes, is carrying multiple babies like twins or triplets, or has been pregnant a lot, like history of many pregnancies. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms that you can see in a patient with this condition. Now, as I go through this part, really pay attention to these specific signs and symptoms because on NCLEX and your nursing lecture exams, they like to take this condition and compare it with placenta previa, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. And also I wanna have another video where I'm gonna just compare these two side by side as a quick review. And what exams like to do is they like to throw these signs and symptoms out at you and you have to know, hey, is this placenta previa or is this abruptio placenta? So try to remember them and as we go through it, I'll try to point out what's in this condition versus placenta previa. Okay, so to help us remember these signs and symptoms, let's remember the word detach because what's happened? The placenta is detached from the uterine wall. Okay, so first D for dark red bleeding. Why is it gonna be dark red? Well, usually 
this bleeding that's occurring in this condition has been, been concealed somewhat. And by the time, if ever, it comes out through the vaginal area, it's been there for a while, so it's gonna be dark red. Instead of being bright red, which is usually in placenta previa. Okay, E for extended fundal height. Again, that's because of the concealed bleeding. It can stay in here, which is going to enlarge the uterus, increasing fundal height, which is why you wanna monitor the fundal height along with, along with the abdominal girth. T for tender uterus. The uterus will be tender in this condition. Compared to in placenta previa, it's going to be soft and not tender. A for abdominal pain or contractions. This will happen with this condition, usually not with placenta previa. C for concealed bleeding. A lot of times it will be concealed, but sometimes it can be visible. However, with placenta previa, it's usually always visible. And what can happen is as this blood collects in the uterus, it can backflow, go into the floping tubes, and you, the patient will enter into shock and you haven't even really seen the blood loss because it's being concealed. So again, that's why you really want to monitor them for that, their fundal height. Okay, H for ab hard abdomen. Whenever you feel it'll be rigid, it'll be hard, painful, tender. E for experience DIC. And again, what is that? That's disseminated intravascular coagulation. And we talked a little bit about that a couple minutes ago. So again, what's happening is that that placenta has become damaged. And whenever it does that, it releases a bunch of thromboplastin into mom's circulation which is gonna do what? It's gonna cause a bunch of clots to start forming throughout her body, which is really bad because if you have clots in a, those major vessels going to the kidneys, what's gonna happen? The kidneys are gonna receive all. It's nice blood to function into renal failure and we've got a big mess on our hands along with affecting other body systems as well. Now, the, whenever this happens, the body senses that. So it says, hey, we've really got to correct this. So it enters into a process called fibrinolysis, where it's going to take the fibrin on those clots and try to dissolve them to get rid of the clots. But this is going to further complicate things. We're going to have a depletion of our clotting factors. And then again, that nice raw site where that placenta has came off of that uterine wall is going to just continue bleeding. It's not gonna have a Band-Aid in a sense to come over it to stop the bleeding. And mom can bleed out really anywhere. IV access you have in her arms, at the site, everything. So you really have to monitor her for that. And then our last part of it is D, we'll have a distressed baby. If this continues to go on for too long, she doesn't go for an emergency C-section or whatever she needs to get this baby out, our baby can start to become very distressed and have abnormal heart tones, those late decelerations, things like that. Now let's look at nursing interventions. What are we gonna do for this patient in this condition? Okay, we talked about them possibly entering into DIC. So we wanna monitor them for that. And we'll look at labs. Are their platelets decreasing? Is their fibrogen decreasing? Also, how's their prothrombin levels? Are they decreasing? All that can indicate that, hey, clotting levels have decreased. Also, gums, look at their gums. Are they bleeding? Are you seeing oozing around IV sites, injection sites? Do they have petechia? And this is where you have broken capillary blood vessels and you see little small purplish areas or ecchymosis, bruising, and the microemboli that we talked about. Because remember in the beginning stages, you get clotting everywhere. So. Have they thrown a clot to the renal system where their urinary output would be decreased? Are they having chest pain? Maybe a clot went to the heart or to the lung, shortness of breath, changes in their mental status where it's went to the brain. So you wanna be looking at all of that. And of course, monitoring them for bleeding. Remember, it can be concealed or it can be visible. So we have to keep in mind that, hey, it may be concealed. So you wanna monitor their vital signs per protocol, that blood pressure, that heart rate, looking for indications of shock, monitoring their fundal height, marking that, checking it regularly, pad, pad count if it is visible, seeing how much they're actually losing, and no abdominal or vaginal exams until they get an ultrasound or whenever the doctor says you can for placenta previa because you want to rule that out. They'll be placed on their left side that increases 
perfusion to the uterus and not in the supine position because they have bleeding. So we don't want to be doing that. Also external monitoring of the baby, which will be monitoring the baby's heart rate. And so you want to be looking for any abnormalities in that. Next, you'll be drawing some labs per physician's order for a type and cross match because they'll probably need some blood depending on how much they've lost. And you'll want to see, are they RH negative, like A negative, something like that, because they'll need, make sure that they've had a Rogam shot. CBC monitoring all those levels and clotting levels. You'll of course want to make sure they have IV access, at least 18 gauge or larger because they'll probably need blood products, IV fluids, things like that. So make sure you have IV access and prep for delivery, depending on where this woman is in her pregnancy, will determine really the treatment outcome with that. But usually if baby's stable, mama's stable, and the baby can be delivered vaginally, can be. But if things are not going good, mom's unstable, baby's unstable, there will be an emergency C-section. Okay, so that wraps up this lecture on Abruptio Placentae. And don't forget to check out the next lecture on Placenta Previa. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.